In the hospital setting, there are a few criteria doctors use to declare death. It is natural to wonder what happens after death. You may be concerned about what will happen to you both physically and spiritually. In general, science can only answer questions about what happens to your body physically during and after death. Here is a timeline of the changes that occur in the body immediately after death. This video will walk you through the processes that occur from the moment a person dies until the various post-mortem stages. At the moment of death The moment of death is not always painful. While some people experience pain at the end of their lives due to medical conditions, others die painlessly. People with terminal illnesses such as cancer are frequently given pain medication to make them comfortable at the time of death. We frequently consider the moment of death to be the time when the heartbeat and breathing cease. However, we are learning that death is not instantaneous. Our brains are now thought to continue working for about 10 minutes after we die, implying that our brains may be aware of our death in some way. Absence of a pulse, absence of breathing, absence of reflexes, and absence of pupil contraction in response to bright light. Paramedics look for the five signs of irreversible death in an emergency setting to determine whether resuscitation or revival is not possible. Death is defined as the irreversible cessation of circulatory and respiratory functions, or brain death, which occurs when the entire brain, including the brainstem, ceases to function. The decision must be made in accordance with accepted medical standards. At hour one, all of the muscles in the body relax at the moment of death a condition known as primary flaccidity. The eyelids relax, the pupils dilate, the jaw may open, and the body's joints and limbs are flexible. When muscles lose tension, the skin sags, causing prominent joints and bones in the body, such as the jaws or hips, to become more prominent. Sphincters relax as muscles relax, allowing urine and feces to pass. Within minutes of the heart stopping, a condition known as pallor mortis causes the body to turn pale as the blood drains from the skin's smaller veins. This process may be more visible in people with light skin than in people with darker skin. During the average human lifespan, the human heart beats more than 2.5 billion times, circulating approximately 5.6 liters of blood through the circulatory system. At the same time, the body begins to cool from its normal temperature of 37 degrees Celsius to the temperature of the surrounding air. Body temperature drops at a relatively steady rate of 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit per hour, a condition known as algor mortis or the death chill. If the body hasn't completely cooled or been exposed Exposed to extreme environmental temperatures, the expected decrease in body temperature during algor mortis can help forensic scientists estimate the time of death. At hours 2 to 6, because the heart is no longer pumping blood, gravity begins to pull it to areas of the body closest to the ground, which is known as pooling, a condition known as liver mortis. If the body is left undisturbed for several hours, the parts of the body closest to the ground may develop a reddish-purple discoloration similar to a bruise caused by blood accumulation. This is sometimes referred to as the post-mortem stain by embalmers. Approximately three hours after death, chemical changes within the body cells cause all of the muscles to stiffen, a condition known as rigor mortis. The eyelids, jaw, and neck are the first muscles to be affected by rigor mortis. Rigor mortis will spread into the face and down through the chest, abdomen, arms, and legs over the next few hours, eventually reaching the fingers and toes. Interestingly, the old custom of placing coins on the deceased's eyelids may have originated from a desire to keep the eyes shut because rigor mortis affects them first. It is also not uncommon for infants and young children to die without rigor mortis, possibly due to their smaller muscle mass. At hours 7 to 12, rigor mortis causes maximum muscle stiffness throughout the body after about 12 hours. Though this is affected by the person's age, physical condition, gender, air temperature, and other factors, the deceased's limbs are difficult to move or manipulate at this point. Knees and elbows will be slightly flexed, and the fingers and toes may appear crooked. From hour 12 and beyond, the muscles will begin to loosen after reaching maximum rigor mortis due to ongoing chemical changes within the cells and internal tissue decay. The process, known as secondary flaccidity, lasts one to three days and is influenced by environmental factors such as temperature. Cold would slow down this process. Second flaccidity causes the skin to shrink giving the impression that hair and nails are growing. 
Rigor mortis will then dissipate in the opposite direction, from the fingertips and toes to the face over a 48-hour period. When secondary flaccidity is complete, all of the body's muscles will be relaxed once more. Now, let's talk about what are the stages of human decomposition. Human decomposition is a natural process that occurs after death and involves the breakdown of tissues. While the rate of human decomposition varies due to a variety of factors such as weather, temperature, moisture, pH, and oxygen levels, cause of death, and body position, all human bodies go through the same four stages. According to Dr. Arpad A. Vas, senior staff scientist at Oak Ridge National Laboratory and adjunct Associate Professor of Forensic Anthropology at the University of Tennessee, human decomposition begins around four minutes after death and progresses through four stages. Autolysis, bloat, active decay, and skeletonization. Stage 1, autolysis. Autolysis, or self-digestion, is the first stage of human decomposition and begins immediately after death. The body has no way of getting oxygen or removing wastes once blood circulation and respiration cease. Excess carbon dioxide creates an acidic environment which causes cell membranes to rupture. The membranes release enzymes which begin eating the cells from within. Muscle stiffness is caused by rigor mortis. On internal organs and the skin surface, small blisters filled with nutrient-rich fluid appear. Because of the ruptured blisters, the body will appear sheeny and the skin's top layer will begin to loosen. Stage 2 – Bloat Bloating of the body is stage 2 of human decomposition. Many gases are produced by leaked enzymes from the first stage. The gases cause the human body to double in size, giving it a bloated appearance. Skin discoloration is caused by the sulfur-containing compounds released by bacteria. In addition, insect activity is possible. Putrefication is caused by microorganisms and bacteria producing extremely unpleasant odors. These odors frequently alert others to the death of a person and can linger long after the body has been removed. Stage 3 – Active Decay Fluids emitted from orifices indicate the start of active decay. Organs, muscles, and skin all liquefy. Hair, bones, cartilage, and other decay byproducts remain after all soft tissue in the body decomposes. During this stage, the cadaver loses the most weight. Stage 4 – Skeletonization there is no set time frame for skeletonization because the skeleton decomposes at a rate determined by the loss of organic, collagen, and inorganic components. This is when the last vestiges of the soft tissues of a corpse or carcass have decayed or dried to the point that the skeleton is exposed. By the end of the skeletonization process, all soft tissues will have been eliminated, leaving behind only disarticulated bones. So that's the end of the video. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and press the notification bell so you never miss out on our next videos. Until the next video, take care.